right, so what we're going to tie here is the shuttlecock. It's a uh, it's a midge imitation. Uh, with a few adjustments, though, you can make it into a mayfly emerger imitation. I should have said that it's a emerging midge imitation because that's what it is. So what I have in the vise is a size 14 NW3, uh, too heavy one extra long, lightning strike, wet nymph hook. And the thread I'm going to be using for this is 80 uni thread and iron gray. And so this is actually pretty easy to tie. This will be one of my shorter videos. <laughs> if you follow along, you know some of my videos are a little long, but I try to explain everything as best as possible so that you don't have to watch them too many times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my thread right behind the eye of the hook. I want to have about a bodkin width. Uh, behind the eye and I'm going to take uh, touching turns about six wraps back or so we're not going to go very far back and I'm going to trim out my tag and then I'm going to bring my thread back forward to where I started next what we're going to get is some CDC you can use like a natural gray you can use cinnamon you can use uh, geez you can actually you really you can color these any way you want uh, the orange collar that we're going to put in towards the end um, that's that represents the midge as it's emerging um, apparently and I've never seen it my, <laughs> myself but apparently when these midges emerge <clears throat> they have this little like orange flash that happens and so that's what that represents but you could really do these in a ton of colors so but, but we're, what we're going to use is uh, some ginger CDC and what I have here is I've got three feathers that I've already aligned the tips on and so what I'm going to do uh, I've got two going the same direction and one going the opposite direction yeah you could use four if you wanted but I want these center stems to kind of line up <clears throat> excuse me I always seem to get I had them lined up I always seem to get a little frog in my throat when I'm recording did that blend up? Okay, there we go. So we want those stems to line up towards the tip. Uh, if you've got a beefy tip on your CDC, you want to cut that little tip out and then just use um, all these other little uh, barbs that come off the tip. So you'd be, you know, you'd be missing this part here that I'm pinching off, and we'd be drawing all this other fluff forward. So you can do that too if you've got some gnarly stem that goes up there. So once you've got your feathers and or your tips lined up on your CDC feathers. What you're going to do is you're going to come back. I, I go, I kind of gauge, gauge it by about a half my thumb distance to start, something like that. Uh, and I kind of draw this stuff to the back and I pull this stuff forward uh, to expose the stems uh, roughly in the same place. It doesn't have to be perfect. Next, what I want to do is I want to place that ex this exposed part right on top of where my th thread's dangling. And I want to do just two loose wraps over. Nothing serious. Uh, and then what I do is I'll kind of lick uh, these three fingers right here, my thumb, my index, and my middle, and I'll kind of stroke all my CDC together a little bit a few times. Now, it's not going to stay together super well. Uh, that's part of the reason why this stuff is so cool. It stays super buoyant. Uh, but now, once I've kind of collected it, now I'm going to take my left hand, and I'm just going to start to pull very gently all that through until I have a little flare up front like that. Uh, now I know it's kind of hard to gauge, but you want this front part to be uh, this front little expansion of the CDC uh, that kind of shows the like the emerging part of the fly, right? You want that to be roughly the distance between where you're starting right here and the barb. So you want it uh, doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, if you pull it too short, do not pull it back forward. Undo your thread wraps and do it again. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with kind of my light wraps for a few more turns. That way it allows me to situate everything right where I want it. I can kind of pull it up, get it situated. Now I can kind of start to crank down on it. Make nice, tight, touching turns. Uh, so when I get back to about the front third position, just meaning that, uh, you know, I'm just 
just on the front side of halfway of the shank. I'm going to come in with my scissors. Oop, I got CDC all over. I'm going to come in with my scissors. I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to cut this at an angle. So it lays like that. And I try to get it so that it lines up with a, about the barb or the hook point. E either one's fine. And I'm going to finish tying that in. If it spins around the hook shank, don't worry about it. Not a big deal. Oh, let's see if we can get part didn't want to wrap down there we go got a stem hanging out so next what I need is some crystal flash I've got UV crystal flash here it's already cut into oh I don't know four what do I got here five inch four inch piece and then what I'll do is I'll just take this and I'll slide it right up underneath my thread so my thread right now is on the front side of my hook that's because I tie all goofy footed Yours would be on the back side if you tie normal, so you'd kind of just you'd come in from the front and lift it up this way. If you tie goofy footed like me, then you're gonna bring it from the back, lift it up. And we want to have about an equal distance on both sides. Next, I'm gonna put a couple of wraps in towards the back. I'm gonna fold my crystal flash over. I'm gonna put one wrap in, and then what I'll do is I'm gonna draw both strands down and under so that they're tied in on the bottom side. So I know you can't see that very well, but they're hanging out down over there. Uh, I always like to start, uh, not always, but majority of the time I like to start my rib for, uh, from the underneath side of the fly. And that's what this crystal flash is gonna be is the rib for the fly. Uh, next, we're gonna put in the, bar the body, which is uh, ice dub and peacock black. And for when you're using the ice dub, it's super beneficial if you've got some sort of tying wax. Uh, if you don't and you've got some, say, like unscented chapstick, that'll work in a pinch. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're kind of a handyman uh, and, and you do that kind of thing, if you've got uh, a, a new wax ring for a toilet, you can use that, uh, believe it or not. Uh, a lot of people use the wax ring for a toilet as the wax for their flies. Oh, it's super tacky, though, so be careful. I'm just gonna wax both sides of my thread. And if you get a little bit of thread or a wax build up on your thread like that, don't wipe it, just take your fingers and dab it off. If you wipe it, you're gonna, you're gonna take the wax off and we don't wanna do that. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my ice dub. Okay, and I've got a huge clump here, but so what I want to do is I'm going to start pulling this apart. This is kind of dubbing 101 if you've never done this with dubbing. Uh, this is a good way to do dubbing. So I want to, uh, in all kinds of dubbing actually. So I want to align these fibers the best I can going in the same direction. Now it's not going to get perfect, okay? It's just you're not going to get it perfect. What I'll do is I'll just take a little bit and I'll pinch and pull. Notice I'm not, I'm not pulling away with this hand, I'm pulling away with the clump. Uh, and that allows me to get these stragglers that wanna stay behind. And so they start to align themselves like this. I'm gonna take my big clump, lay it right back on top, pinch and pull. And each time I do this, I'm just gonna very slightly move my fingers forward. So I'll put the new, new one in, I'll move my fingers down just a fuzz. I'm going to keep doing that until I think I have about what I need. Remember, you can always add more very easily. Taking it off is much more difficult. So once I have that, I'm going to set it right on my thread. I turn my vise to the side just to get everything out of the way so I can get my hand underneath and work it. And I'm going to, I'm going to start to twist. I want, to get my, I want my dubbing noodle very thin here. And I'm going to try to do the best I can to taper it, just meaning it's going to kind of be a cigar shape as, as we go forward. So when you're doing that, you can pinch and you can take, I'm pinching with my left thumb, left index, and I'm going to pull some down with my right thumb, right index to kind of separate it out. And if you don't quite keep that cone shape, it's not a big deal. I pulled a little too much there for it to stay that way. Now, when you're working with something like ice dub, uh, and other dubs too, like the SLF we're going to use here in a minute. It's very slippery material. So just get a little bit 
going just like this i've got a whole bunch of fuzz hanging out there like you see it. i like to have that there because this is easier to take off or add to uh, if it's this way but now i'm going to take my dubbing i'm going to slide it up i need to give it another little twist so i get it right up to the hook shank i'm going to turn my vise back over and now i'm going to put one wrap in just like so what that does is that allows all that dubbing to go around almost a full turn around the hook shank and it's going to kind of lock it in place to some degree and now i can work my dubbing down even a little bit more uh, without it all pulling out and following and, and now i'm going to yeah, twist when i need to ice dub can take some practice now, you'll see how I've kind of got a little bit of a build up there. No big deal. We can take it and we can pull it to thin it down. Or if it doesn't do it, like it didn't want to there, just back off your thread and do it again. Getting ice dub perfect can be a real challenge. So if you're, if you're struggling with it on the first few tries, don't, don't stress it. Now I'm going to start to work this guy forward. And we want it to have a taper going forward, just meaning we want it to progressively get bigger as we take it up to behind the CDC. And just take your time and do it. No sense in rushing it. Now, you'll see I've still got all this kind of fuzzy at the back. Now what that's going to allow me to do is take this and start to pull it away. Uh, this works really well on other dubbings too. Now you'll have this little bit that's caught in there. You can kind of pinch and hold. I'll put a couple wraps in. Uh, and then you, since that's all tied in, you can come in and just trim it out. I do that, with again, with all kinds of dubs. So, or dubbings. Uh, any long scragglers that you have on that, you can come in and just kind of trim off. Uh, I like to have some still hanging out, give it that buggy look. So next what we're going to do is we're going to put our rib in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take both pieces of our crystal flash. We're going to uh, make sure that they're touching. I've seen some people actually wax one, one of these to kind of help them get to stick. Uh, you can do that if you want. I just lost my other one. So you can actually just take one here and just add a little wax right there if you need to. Uh, you can twist them together. Uh, Crystal Flash doesn't twist together super well. But you can try that. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them right next to one another. And I'm going to start wrapping forward. Now as you do this, they should start to lay down on one another. Uh, and give you just some extra uh, stability. Uh, beef, as it were. <laughs> for, uh, for your rib. Oh, I lost it. Come on, get out of there. Okay, let me try that one more time. There we go. And when you wanna just try to evenly space them, uh, you're gonna get some of this lost inside your dubbing and that's okay, don't worry about it. What we're looking for here is four to five turns of Crystal Flash up to the CDC. Once you get there, just cross, cross it over your thread a couple of turns, lock it down with two or three turns, right? I'm gonna grab all this, I'm gonna fold it to the back and I'm gonna put two or three turns right on top. Again, that creates this little V wedge. We've got our material tied in going forward. We turned around, sent it to the back and tied it in going the opposite direction. Uh, that really locks this stuff in place. So now we can come in and trim that out and there's no, no fear of it coming undone. So, I'm just going to put a few more turns in, just like so. So next what we're going to get is we're going to get some uh, of Davey Watton's SLF. Uh, Davey Watton does some awesome dubbing tricks, so look him up on YouTube. Uh, and then he's also got these uh, dubbing blends. So we don't need a lot here. Uh, and this is the orange dubbing I was talking about, right? So what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to line it up. Let me get on the front side there. We're going to line it up. I'm going to pinch a little and pull. I'm going to line it back up. Pull. Line it back up. 
pull. We're, we just don't need a super lot here. Um, again, because this kind of dubbing is super slick. It's the FLS standard dubbing. Uh, wax really is beneficial here. Ooh, I got a whole bunch right there. Wipe that off my finger. And now we can, with one direction, twist. I'm going to slide that up. I'm going to put and get a couple turns in on that one. And I'm just going to start to work, work that dubbing. If you need to hold the dubbing while you do this, don't be afraid to do that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to build our little orange collar. And we want this to be at minimum equal to the front size of uh, the body dub here or bigger. I like to go just a little bit bigger. I think it just looks, as far as tying a fly is concerned, just a you know, touch more natural. So once I have what I need, I'm just going to pull the rest away. Put one more wrap in. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm too close. Okay. Now I'm going to put one more wrap in, but I'm going to lift my CDC wing back. I'll put a couple of wraps in. If you've got a bunch of fuzzy stuff here, if you don't like it, Now's the time to get rid of it, or if you think it's going to impede you getting your tippet through, get rid of it now. Uh, otherwise, roll with it. And I'm going to put about, oh, five to seven turns in right here. We don't want this head to be very big. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to whip finish. Uh, because this head is so small and it's right underneath that CDC, we don't want any glue on that CDC. It'll stop the action in it. So... If you want to glue your head shut, what you can do is take your, uh, you know, your head cement or your uh, super glue, and get it just a little bit on your thread. This is called a wet whip or a wet whip finish, and kind of do it all at one time. Whoa, hey now, move to the back. Okay, and now we'll put those in, and I'll put again about five to seven turns in. I want to keep the profile that head small. Ooh, I just snapped it. Good thing I glued it. It happens. There we go. May have to come in and dab a little bit on the bottom side. So now this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, you can leave that hanging if you want. I think it's a little too, too much for me. So I'm going to come in and trim it out. A little bit anyway. I like to have some of it, you know, buzzing and dancing around in the water. Okay. You know what? I've got that little piece of thread in there, and I don't think I can get to it without, without chopping off some of my CDC. So what I'll do is I'll this time I'll just get my bodkin just to make sure it's all sealed up and put a little drop of glue in my bodkin and we'll pull my CDC out of the way. And I'll let it soak in right there into the dubbing and keep my CDC free. Turn that guy back over. And there you go. And a couple st stragglers right there. So there you go, that's uh, that's the shuttlecock. Uh, pretty simple fly to tie. Um, there's a few tricks that you can do uh, with tying in the CDC a different way to kind of make it a mayfly merger. Primarily you just tie it, your CDC wing in going back. You do your uh, all the back with the CDC hanging out where my finger is, towards the back. Uh, then you'd build your little bubble, you'd roll your CDC out so that it's got a little a uh, little CDC uh, bubble uh, wing case right there. So you can give that a try too. That'd be more of a, a mayfly, imita a true mayfly imitation. So anyhow, uh, maybe I'll do one of those videos uh, here in the future. Uh, if you liked the video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you haven't. I would really appreciate that. Uh, and share the video. 
Um, you can always check us out at Fly Tying for Beginners on Facebook. Answer the questions, and that's your golden ticket in. We do all kinds of fun stuff over there. And uh, other than that, uh, happy tying, everybody. We'll see you on the next video.